Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing major depressive disorder. Now, if you guys don't already know, major depressive disorder is a very high yield subject that you should definitely know for the USMLE step one. You're going to be tested on it. You can guarantee it because it is such a common thing, Certain, certainly something a lot of people suffer from. So definitely spend your time with this video and this content. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, we have a psychiatry for the USMLE Step 1 playlist where we have videos for everything you may need. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's begin our discussion on major depressive disorder. In our previous video, we discussed an overview of mood disorders, and if you guys haven't checked it out, go ahead and watch it. It's a quick two, three, sorry, it's a quick five minute video where we discuss an overview of what happens in mood disorders. Now, when it comes to major depressive disorder or MDD, it is also known as depression. It's something that a lot of people suffer from and it's something that a lot of people go through in life. And I'm guaranteeing you at one point in your life, you will suffer from some variant of uh, depression. Now, for certain people, this type of depression becomes a disorder, something that affects their ability to live and their ability to cope. And it's characterized by several things. Mainly, it's characterized by a chronically depressed mood with a lack of interest. Patients who suffer from MDD also end up having fatigue and loss of energy. And that's one of the two most important things about MDD is that patients will not only have a lack of interest, they'll have a lack of energy. And those two things should put you, uh, should clue you into thinking about MDD. Patients also end up having suicidal thoughts and some of them end up attempting suicide because the depression can be so bad. And the three main things you should definitely know, you should definitely know, and it's pretty important, is that patients end up having a change in appetite, which causes a change in their weight. In our previous video, we discussed how uh, mood disorders are a physiologic disorder. And it is physiologic because the emotions, right, the emotion of being depressed ends up affecting their appetite and this ends up affecting their weight which is actually physiologic and together these can cause a lot of problems in a patient's body and mind they're very closely intertwined patients also end up having sleep disturbances that's very common and they also end up having psychomotor agitation and or retardation. Now, these three things are very important because it ends up exacerbating the disease from being just an emotional disease where, you know, they're just feeling a lack, lack of energy, they feel like they want to commit suicide, to a more physiologic disease where they end up losing weight or gaining weight and that has its own issues associated with it. They're not sleeping properly and that has its own issues or they're sleeping too much and they may have psychomotor agitation and or retardation. Now, when it comes to MDD, there are so many causes of MDD that it doesn't make sense for us to write them out or for you to memorize them. Just understand that it can be precipitated by a multitude of, uh, of things. And when it comes to major depressive disorder, for the USMLE Step 1, you need to understand the clinical symptoms. So first of all, what ends up happening is that patients end up getting some sort of insomnia. That is very common. Either they'll have an initial insomnia where they have trouble getting asleep or middle insomnia like they have trouble staying asleep or they have something called terminal ins insomnia where they wake up later than usual. Essentially in MDD patients just have insomnia in one way, shape or form. And then they can also have something called hypersomnia. Hypersomnia is different. It's not having trouble with sleep. It's that they're excessively sleeping. That's the other end of the spectrum when it comes to sleep for patients who are chronically depressed. And these sleeping patterns manifest in several ways. Patients can have an increase in the total REM sleep. They can have increased REM in early on in their sleep cycle. They can have decreased slow wave sleep. And they can also have decreased uh, REM latency. And in a different video, we talk about what all this means. Just understand that in MDD, when it comes to your sleeping patterns, they get really wonky, they get really messed up. That is very, very common. Other things that can happen when it comes to uh, the clinical symptoms are gonna be the psychomotor agitation that we talked about. A lot of these patients end up having repetitive motions that they're continuously doing. They may be pacing around a lot, they may not feel comfortable with what's happening, and they may feel 
uh, a feeling of in, inner tension. Like there's something going on with inside them that shouldn't be there. Something that they need to fix, but they just can't. Patients may also have something called psychomotor retardation, which is the opposite of psychomotor agitation. They may, f- they may feel like everything is slowing down. They talk slowly or they start thinking very slowly, and that's not normal. They may have a very low voice, very flat affect, like they don't want to really discuss it openly. And they may be slow to answer the questions, and they often seem like they're not interested. They often respond with a few very few words. So this is something, you know, of psychomotor retardation. This right here, as you can see, is psychomotor agitation going over and over in uh, circles. Now, one of the main things when it comes to psychiatry, especially psychologic uh, disorders that we've been discussing over and over again in this in this course so far, is that diagnosis is very, very important. When it comes to psychiatry for the USMLE Step 1, you have to make sure you understand the diagnostic criteria. Man, that is so important for you to know because a lot of times one or two different diagnostic criteria differences can change the whole course of your disease, uh, uh, not outcome, but the disease um, um, diagnosis. There you go. So definitely this is no different. This is going to be a very high yield a F uh, slide So definitely star this slide for yourself and spend some time with it. Now in MDD, you need to have at least five of the nine symptoms that are that we've discussed for a minimum of two weeks. Okay, two weeks is the 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 golden number you need to know for duration. And all of these symptoms have to occur without mania. They can't feel manic. And mania is pretty much when they feel like they have to do a lot of things at once. They end up doing everything they can all at once. They're just a manic. You know, that's the only way I can describe it. So there are several symptoms that you should know. And these are called, uh, uh, sorry, these are sleep disturbances like we've been discussing, whether in the REM pattern or insomnia, hypersomnia. They could have a, a, a lack of interest, and that's called anhedonia. That's definitely something that can happen. They could have guilt. Uh, obviously, they, it, it has no reason. They may not have a reason to feel guilty, but they just feel guilty in general. Patients might have loss of energy and concentration problems. They may have changes in their appetite. And then fi- psychomotor changes are also something that can happen. And then finally, one of the most important thing is that patients who are depressed usually have suicidal thoughts and tendencies. Like I wrote in red for you guys, so you don't forget this, this is the single most important factor for predicting suicide is whether or not they have MDD. That is very, very important. That is very, very high yield. So do not, do not, do not forget this at all costs. Commit this to memory. Now, if you can see, I have uh, put all the first letters of, you know, all these symptoms in red. And that's the simple, easy memory tool that you can use. It's called SIG ECAPS. Now, you guys have probably heard this. This is throughout the internet. We've seen this on many different sites and books, etc. Uh, just memorize this or try, in my opinion, I never used this memory tool. Personally, I didn't like it because I was like, okay, I'm going to forget this with all the other acronyms. What I like to think about are when you think about someone who's depressed, what's going on? And I try to put myself in that situation and that definitely helped me out with all the questions. I would count down on my hand, do they have at least five symptoms? Lack of interest, sleep problem, concentration, eating, and then physical problem. All those different things. If I can count five things that I know are abnormal, it usually points me towards MDD. Now, obviously, I need to make sure it's happening within the two-week time frame. That's very important. In psychiatry, the timing is very important. So five, at least five of the nine symptoms for at least two weeks. Now, the treatment for... Uh, major depressive disorder is pretty straightforward. It's not. It's usually going to be used by. Uh, it's usually going to be first line CBT cognitive behavioral therapy and a class of drug called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. In our 
in our upcoming videos, we're going to be discussing the psychiatry medications in depth along with the type they are and what they do, the mechanism of action. And just know that in major depressive disorder, you want to allow more serotonin to be within the synapses, in the synapses and within the synaptic cleft. So one class you can use are called the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. And I would commit these three drugs to memory right now because it's very important. Fluoxetine, paroxetine, and sertraline. These are the first line drugs that are usually used to treat MDD along with cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. Now if that doesn't work, obviously the next line would be SNRIs which are serotonin norepinephrine, re, uh, re, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, venlafaxine, duloxetine, and you can also use other drugs like mirtazapine and bupropion uh, to treat these types of disorders. Now, SNRIs, uh, mirtazapine, and bupropion are obviously second-line drugs. They're usually used to treat uh, refractory or treatment-resistant depression. That's where they use. And if all else fails, and this is kind of barbaric in my personal opinion, but if all else fails, electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, can definitely be used in treatment-resistant patients. Although, I personally have never seen this, nor have I heard of any physician who practices this anymore. Majority of the MDD conditions can be treated right here. So I would highly recommend you try to memorize this slide. This is very important, especially the names of the drugs for now. In our upcoming videos, we're going to discuss them in more detail. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this cleared up some of the uh, questions you may have, or I hope this helped you understand what happens in major depressive disorder. Think, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you are done, if you guys are interested, we have posted our lectures in a podcast format on these streaming services. So all the major streaming services have our podcast. So just go there, search Mad Medicine, and you can listen to the USMLE Step 1 podcast on there. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys back here real soon. Go ahead and continue on to the next video.